So first of all, uh, I will give uh, uh, a quick overview of the notion of accessibility and discrete groups, just to give some historical flavor of uh, what's going on. Then I will focus, I will move to for finite graph, the P3 is Basser theory, uh, which is uh, which was initiated by Ribes, Melnik, and Zaleski. Oh, there is a missed, there is a typo. Um, and then in the end, I will talk about the okay, K a cylindrical accessibility and the application. So this is the plan for the talk. And uh, let's start with the warming up. So let's talk about accessibility and discrete groups. Uh, before I keep on going, I just want to say that today there were some issues with um, uh, internet connection. So if um, I freeze, please uh, tell me something and uh, yeah, just just tell me that you cannot see my slides. Okay, but hopefully nothing is going to happen. Okay, so let's uh, go back to accessibility and discrete groups. In order to talk about accessibility, one has to talk about Basser theory. I'm not going to give the details because many of you are familiar with this notion, but just in case, let me give um, an appetizer, like let me give a, a brief introduction uh, on the idea of Basser theory. So what is the idea here? Uh, the idea is that we have a discrete group G, which acts on a tree without edge inversion. And if this happens, then the group G can be reconstructed from the following data. So we have the quotient graph, which is, um, yeah, which is a, the, yeah, we just consider the tree, the action, and we quotient out the action. And then we need to understand uh, which are the vertex stabilizers and the edge stabilizers. When, once we have all this data, then we are able to uh, reconstruct the group um, via uh, an iteration of HN extension and free product with amalgamation. And which groups are involved in this uh, operation? The groups are going to be these vertex stabilizers and these edge stabilizers. And uh, the objects that uh, will tell us uh, how we should uh, produce this uh, operation um, so the, um, the object is the quotient graph. So by looking at the quotient graph, we know whether we have to produce an HN extension or a free product of amalgamation. So as I said before, these data are um, all we need in order to understand the, the structure of the group. So Buster theory tells us that whenever we have an action on, of the group on a tree, then we can associate this action um, this uh, object, which is called the graph of groups, and this object collects all the information that we need in order to reconstruct the group as uh, uh, iterated HN extension and free product of amalgamation. And Basser theory, the full strength, is that we can also go in the other direction. So if we start with a graph of groups, then uh, we can associate to this graph of groups um, a pair of uh, given by a group and a tree, and this group is acting on the tree. The group is called the fundamental group of the graph of groups, and the tree is called the standard tree. So Buster theory allows to move uh, between group acting on trees and uh, this abstract, abstract object, which is called graph of groups. At the moment, I'm not going to give the definition. I will Term something more in the profanite phase. Okay, so this is the idea. Uh, accessibility, the origin. When, if we have to uh, trace back the origin of accessibility, probably the first theorem that comes to our mind is Brusto theorem. So we start from a group which is finitely generated, and, uh, and then we mm, suppose that the group G can be decomposed into a free product uh, of uh, groups G1, G3, then the theorem tells us that 
the rank of the group equals the sum of the ranks of the factors. And here the rank is the minimal number of generators. And this is a famous theorem. And what we can read out of this statement is the following. G does not decompose as a free product with, uh, uh, with an arbitrary large number of factors because the, the K that appears in the statement can be at most the rank of the whole group G. The second thing that, that we can deduce is that if we use Basser theory to look at this statement, then we know that uh, the group decomposes in this way uh, if uh, the group acts on a tree with trivial edge stabilizers. And so the third thing is that if we associate to this action on the tree, a graph of groups, then uh, the number of edges on, of the underlying uh, graph or of the decomposition uh, is bounded by a number that depends only um, on the group G. And uh, the idea of accessibility is this one. The idea of accessibility is that uh, whenever you are able to um, decompose your group, then there is a uniform bound on the number of edges on the underlying graph that can, um, that can appear in the decomposition. But why, um, so let me be more specific in order to explain this point. And let me say that uh, Grushko theorem uh, regards only trivial edge stabilizers. But of course, one can think of uh, allowing non-trivial edge stabilizers. And so we get the notion of uh, F accessibility. So let F be a family of groups. A currently generated group G is said to be F accessible if there is a number such that any finite reduced graph of groups with edge stabilizers in this family, uh, such that the group can be decomposed uh, as fundamental group of this graph of groups uh, as most as at most ng edges. So the number of edges in the composition is bounded by a number that uh, depends only on the group. From the from a historical point of view, we have uh, a famous re result of Linnell, 1983, where um, Linnell proved that uh, a finitely generated group G, um, if this group admits uh, a uniform bound on the cardinality of the finite subgroups, then the group G is accessible over the family of finite subgroups. I should say that in literature, you don't, usually when you talk about accessibility without specifying any family, uh, it means that you are working over the family of finite subgroups. So Linnell, uh, this is the first result uh, concerning uh, accessibility for finitely generated group. Uh, then there was Dan Budi in 1985. He proved that every finite represented group is accessible over finite subgroups. We can also find a contribution which regards uh, accessibility over small subgroups. So every finite represented group is small accessible. And of course, the question at the time was, is it true that every finitely generated group is accessible over uh, finite subgroups? And the answer was negative. So there exists a finitely generated group, which is uh, non-accessible um, uh, over finite subgroups. So this is uh, more or less the, the story about uh, accessibility for finitely generated discrete group when we are allowing uh, edge, when we are allowing uh, action on trees where uh, the stabilizer of the edges are trivial. But let's have a look at a, a different kind of accessibility that uh, one can define um, in order to, uh, to get a result that holds for a uh, finitely generated group in general. Because as you can see, there is no hope for a finitely generated group to be uh, accessible over finite subgroup. 
but maybe if we change uh, the requirements, then there is some hope. And this was the idea that uh, led uh, CELA to introduce the accessibility for um, K cylindrical actions on trees. So what is a K cylindrical action on a tree? Uh, so we are still in the discrete case. We can see the uh, K is a positive integer. A group G acts K cylindrically on a tree if the stabilizer of any geodesic of length hidden than K is trivial. So why this is a generalization of uh, what was happening in Grushko theorem? So Grushko theorem, we were asking for trivial stabilizer of edges, but an edge in a tree is nothing but a geodesic of length one. So actually, in Grushko theorem, we were asking for action on trees with uh, stabilizers of geodesic of length one equal to uh, the trivial group. And so you can see how K uh, uh, acidindrical um, K acidindrical action generalizes this kind of uh, requirement. The, the theorem proved by Sela in 1997 states that every phantogenetic group is K acidindrically accessible. What does it mean? This means that whenever we are able to decompose our group as a fundamental group of um, a graph of groups where the action on the standard tree and the buster tree is K acidindrical, then the number of edges that appears in the um, quotient graph, let's say, uh, is bounded uh, by uh, a number that only depends on the group. So it's always the same. Um, yeah, it's all, always the same uh, definition, but now you change the action, the, the properties that the action on the tree has to satisfy. Okay, uh, of course, if there is any question, just ask me. This, I suppose that these uh, things are well known for most of the audience, but you know, you never know at the conference. So I like to, to give an introduction about everything. Uh, let's see what comes next. So next we have to deal with accessibility and locally compact groups. So I did not resist uh, and I prepared only one slide on totally disconnected locally compact groups. I promise that uh, the talk is going to be on pretty groups, but, uh, but I come from that um, world and uh, that, that is also the area where I met accessibility for the first time. And um, so let's, let's just talk for one slide about totally disconnected locally compact groups. So I usually call them TBLC groups, but most of the people call them TBLC groups. Uh, whenever you want to think about this group, there is one property that is the most uh, characterizing one, which is due to Van Danzig. So a group G is totally disconnected locally compact, if and only if the family of all compact open subgroups form a basis of neighborhoods uh, of the density element of the group. So of course, for finite groups are uh, totally disconnected locally compact. In particular, they are the compact case for this class of groups. The, but there is a main difference between totally disconnected locally compact groups and finite group, which is the, um, uh, the geometric flavor. Um, whenever we consider a non-compact totally disconnected locally compact group, then this group can, uh, can uh, admit a continuous action on infinite trees where the trees are considered to be discrete spaces. So this is something that is allowed in this general case. Um, and this also, oh, but this, this is not Basser, but this is Basser, of course. Um, um, so that, the fact is that whenever you want to deal with totally disconnected locally compact groups, Basser theory just carries over 
to use uh, topological realm with not so many um, um, corrections. So you, there is not much effort in using this theory in this topological context. So you can define accessibility straight away as we have done uh, in the discrete case. And in particular, whenever you want to deal with um, the analog of accessibility over finite groups, then you have to deal with accessibility over compact groups. And uh, there were a few results about accessibility in this context. And uh, Yves de Cornulier in 2016 proved this analog of the Ambudi theorem about uh, compact accessibility for compact represented TDLC groups. And uh, recently with um, Bianca Marchion and Thomas Weigel, oh my God, this, this slide is full of typos. Um, sorry for that. Uh, this, um, we proved an analog of Linnell result for TDLC groups. So when you have some kind of bound on the sides of contact subgroups in your group. Okay, so this was one slide uh, about TDLC group. And why I decided to insert this slide? Because for this kind of topological groups, the combinatorial theory works um, as good as uh, in the discrete case and you have not to do uh, anything much different from that. Um, but this was not the case when uh, I started working with Pader about uh, accessibility for copy groups. As you know, this is here. Uh, if we move to copy groups, then we have to um, we have to deal with profinite graphs. We cannot, yeah, we. Uh, we cannot deal with infinite discrete graphs as we were doing before for the other topological groups. Okay, so um, let's see, just let's recall a few definitions. Uh, profinite graph, uh, what does it mean? We have a profinite space, gamma, and we call it, uh, we say that this is a profinite graph if it comes with uh, a distinguished closed uh, subset, the gamma, which is the set of vertices, together with two continuous maps, which are the boundary maps. Uh, these two maps have, has to be the identity over the vertices. And, uh, and then um, we, we obtain the set of edges by um, computing the complement in gamma of the set of vertices. The usual example, uh, at least for me, the first, the first example of uh, such a graph um, is the following. We have uh, gamma, uh, a one-point compactification of two copies of N, and then uh, we have V gamma, which is, um, yeah, it's, so it's written here. We have V gamma, E gamma, and then we have to define uh, the boundary maps, uh, which are the identity over the vertices. So we need to define them only on the set of edges. So the first one just sends uh, an integer to itself. The second one sends an integer to the successive integer. And if we want to picture, uh, to draw a picture of this graph, we see this line that points to this infinite um, point. Uh, this example is for me always uh, clear because or always useful because it shows how a profinite graph is indeed an abstract graph, but uh, things can be can work differently if we want to define uh, some properties such as connectedness, for example. Um, but before we go there, I think that I need just to recall the notion of a morphism of the finite graph. So if we consider a morphism phi between two profinite graphs, uh, this is nothing but a map which commutes with the boundary maps. And uh, so it's important to notice that uh, in this case, uh, even if vertices are sent to vertices, uh, an edge can be sent to a vertex. So uh, does not um, the 
this morphism does not preserve the, um, the edges of the graph. We don't require this, um, this property. Okay. Uh, so, um, in order to talk about Wasser theory for profanite, uh, for copy groups and profanite graph, uh, we need first to do this remark about um, the way we define connect connectedness uh, for profanite graph. So, every profanite graph gamma can be represented as um, an inverse limit of its finite quotient graph. And so, as usual, we uh, we attach a, a property to the profinite object by looking at its property on the finite quotient. So we say that the profinite graph is connected if all its finite quotient graphs are connected as abstract uh, graph. And why I need connectedness? Because in order to talk about Basser theory, I need to talk about trees uh, in the profinite realm. Uh, and so let's define what is uh, a property tree for, uh, for, uh, yeah, for us. So we consider a connected profinite graph that we write as an inverse limit. And, and then we compute uh, what is the fundamental property group of uh, the graph, which is built up by using the fundamental groups of the quotient. And then you complete uh, each one in your, your computer for completion. With the definition is the following: a profinite graph is uh, a profinite a connected profinite graph is a property tree if the property fundamental group is trivial. Uh, of course, so now we have we are building all the ingredients that we need for Basser theory. So we have property groups property trees, so we have property groups that can act on property trees uh, continuously. Uh, and we want to say that uh, this kind of action can be read out of some um, object, which is the, um, the graph of property groups. So let's uh, have a look at the definition of these objects. So lambda is a connected finite graph. The graph of property groups, G lambda over lambda, consists of the following data. So we have a property group for each element of the graph, so for each uh, vertex and for each edge, we have a property group. And then whenever we pick an edge, we have continuous homomorphisms that uh, connect the edge group to its uh, corresponding vertex groups. So. This definition is similar to the one in this case, but I wanted to recall it because sometimes I'm going to use the, this kind of notation. So I just wanted to, to fix the notation, even if um, the definition um, it's um, similar to the one for this case. Okay, so uh, the good thing about Buster theory in the copy case is that if you start with a graph of copy groups, then you can build um, a, the, the fundamental group of this graph of property groups, which is a property group. And then you can associate um, a tree to this group and an action. Um, so you have um, this arrow that allow you to uh, look at a graph of property groups as action of property groups on property trees. The problem when you uh, move, um, when, when you try to uh, get, um, when, when you try to define Basser theory in the copy phase is that uh, does not work in full strength. So it's not always true that whenever you have uh, an action on a copy of a copy group on a copy tree, then you can ask, you can compute the, um, the graph of copy groups that, um, gives you the, the information that you want. And this is like a crucial difference also um, if we compare um, the theory of property groups to the theory of totally disconnected locally compact groups. There, this problem was, was, not, was not there. Like the Buster theory works in full strength. 
here in the proper case, things are uh, a bit different. And, uh, and this is also a motivation for studying accessibility from my point of view, because, um, because Busser theory works, let's say, well, if you, um, if you have um, accessible uh, proper goods. Okay, I think that, yes, this is the slide where, so F accessibility for proper groups, um, we give the same definition as before, but now everything is translated in the proper um, context. So we have the family of groups, uh, a finitely generated proper group, and we call it F accessible if there is this number which depends only on the group, such that any finite proper reduced graph of groups, uh, of proper groups, I should uh, write, with edge stabilizer in S, having fundamental group as a worship to G, as at most NG edges. Here, there is a, a difference uh, between the statement, the definition that I gave for this group and this one, which um, concern the two adjectives that you can see here before, uh, so proper and reduced. Reduced uh, was already um, was already there when I was talking about discrete groups, because whenever you want to look at the composition of your group, you want to look at the composition that are reduced, which means that there are no uh, fictitious edges in the, um, whenever, you, yeah, we are, whenever you have an edge, which is not a loop, then the edge group is not isomorphic to, uh, to, to one of the vertex groups that you, um, that, you, that you have. So you want to, to actually decompose your group. Um, and, but the, the second property, which is properness, this is uh, very specific for the proper case. So a finite graph of proper groups is proper if the natural map from the vertex group to the fundamental group is an embedding for all vertices. This property is not uh, there for discrete groups because it comes uh, for free by uh, by uh, Basser theory uh, for for, for uh, discrete groups. But in the proper case, we need to require this property because it's not always there. But even if we need to require these properties, these are not very restrictive. Like you can always, um, yeah. You are not losing information by acquiring these properties. Okay, but um, so this is the um, definition of F accessibility for proper groups. And uh, as I said before, whenever you have a group, a proper group which is F accessible, then Busser theory works uh, a bit better. And this claim is motivated by this theorem. So let G be. Uh, a finitely generated F accessible copy group acting on a copy tree um, with edge stabilizer in F, then G um, is the fundamental group, is the fundamental copy group, oh sorry, um, of a finite graph of finitely generated copy groups where each vertex group and each edge group is a vertex stabilizer and an edge stabilizer respectively. So this means that you can get, if, if your group is F accessible, then, uh, and it is acting on a tree with the right edge stabilizer, then you can actually decompose your group as a fundamental group of a graph of proper groups. Uh, and so this theorem shows how much it's important to study uh, accessibility for uh, proper groups. And, this also leads to the next slide. Ah, this is, let's see. Ah, yes, I wanted to give you some, uh, some um, other results about accessibility. So with this in 2019, he proved the linear analog for finitely generated proper groups. And he also proved that there exists a finitely generated proper group, which is not uh, accessible over finite uh, proper groups. And it is open the question whether finitely presented proper groups are accessible or over finite groups. And um, 
Okay, so these are the results, more or less, um, that are known um, comparing to what is happening to the discrete case. Okay, now after, let me have a look at the time. Okay, I am fine. Now finally is the moment where I should talk about uh, my result with uh, Pavel about uh, clear cylindrical accessibility for poly groups. So um, we proved that if the group G is the fundamental group of a finite reduced clear cylindrical graph of poly groups, so this means that the, the action of the group on the standard tree is clear cylindrical, then we have a bound on the number of edges and also uh, on the number of vertices. And this bound only depends on the on the groups and on the integer k that we uh, have from the from the action. Also, this kind of accessibility has an impact on the Basser theory for copy groups because we can deduce a, a structure theorem for a finitely generated subgroup uh, in the following way. So let's suppose that G. Uh, is the fundamental group or the finite reduced uh, clear cylindrical graph of copy groups and choose a finitely generated uh, copy subgroup H. Then, uh, since we have the theorem, uh, since, the, um, since we have the K cylindrical accessibility, then we can prove that also the subgroup can be described as a fundamental group of a finite graph. Uh, where all edge and vertex groups uh, are indeed conjugate into edge and vertex group of the, the graph of groups that come from the, the ambient group G. And how it is possible um, to prove this theorem? Okay, this is a, a very short sketch of the proof, but uh, the, it is all we need because the, the thing is that uh, once we have Clear cylindrical accessibility, we can consider the family uh, FH of all subgroups um, of H that are conjugates to subgroups of uh, the edge groups. Um, this is uh, G gamma, not G lambda. Oh. Okay. Um, then once you once you define this family, the important thing is that then you just have to notice that your finitely generated subgroup is accessible over this family of subgroups. And then you apply the theorem that I showed before about uh, F accessibility and action on trees. So you um, combining these two results about accessibility for property groups, you also get a structure theorem for finitely generated subgroup of um, in this specific case, which is cool. And um, what else? So I want to talk about some applications. So let's see what I listed here. Um, so whenever you talk about the composition of groups, then the first uh, thing comes to your mind is uh, free product reamalgamation. So, um, and uh, after uh, Desi talk, uh, we all know what is uh, a coherent uh, property group. So I don't need to <laughs> recall things. Um, so if we have a group that is uh, a free property product of coherent property groups over an analytic property group, uh, then if H is malnormal in one of the factor, then the whole group is coherent. And how the proof goes, uh, the proof goes in this way. You, you, you consider, um, so you consider a finitely generated group K uh, in G. And uh, by uh, the previous result about accessibility and the structure theorem, you know that you can describe your group as uh, a fundamental group of a, a graph of uh, copy groups. And then, you know, you, you exactly know a presentation for this fundamental group. So you write down the presentation and 
and you start checking uh, whether your group is fine represented, and you just discover that um, the vertex group KV, they are all uh, finitely presented because they are finitely uh, generated subgroup of coherent groups. And then you also notice that all the additional um, uh, relation that you have in your presentation, they comes from uh, the edge groups and, um, but the edge groups are, um, so we, we asked for an edge group that is, um, uh, that is uh, analytic property group. So there is the rank there that is finite and it is bounding the number of generators. So uh, you can also deduce that all the extra relation that comes um, in that way, we have found many of those. So just by looking at the presentation, you can deduce that your um, group is found represented. Okay, then what else? Um, this is uh, another result, which is an analog of uh, a result that we have in the discrete context that was proved by Caras and Solita. Um, we have again a group, uh, which is a free property product with uh, malnormal amalgamation. And then you want to study all the two generated subgroup. Uh, in this case, you discover that you don't have many options. So either the two generated subgroup is contained, is, um, is conjugate to, into one of the two factors of the free product. Or if this is not happening, then uh, the subgroup has to be a free profit product of two cyclic groups. So we get uh, a complete description of uh, two generated subgroups of free product with amalgamation with malnormal amalgamation. And uh, malnormality here is important in order to get um, asymmetrically um, actions on trees. And then I think that it comes the last uh, application because the, the conference is called Combinatorial Theory for Finite Groups and Applications. So I tried to list it all the uh, possible application that we got. Uh, so this is the last one. This concern, uh, uh, Poincaré duality uh, property groups in dimension N and uh, how we can uh, decompose uh, these groups. So the statement is the following. For every Poincaré duality property group in dimension N, there exists a possibly trivial K cylindrical property uh, G3 T satisfying the following properties. Then every edge stabilizer is a maximal polycyclic subgroup of each length N minus one. Polycyclic subgroups, uh, they have to stabilize vertices, uh, at least one vertex in the graph, in the tree. And the underlying graph of groups does not split farther here cylindrically over uh, polycyclic subgroups of each length n minus one. Moreover, every two uh, perfect G3 is satisfying uh, the properties above are G isomorphic. So what does it mean? This means that um, this kind of decomposition, um, let's say they are in some sense unique. Um, when, when I was studying uh, this with Pavel, he explained to me because I'm, uh, I'm not very um, strong in uh, low dimensional topology, but so when, when you talk about uh, three manifolds, closed three manifolds, then there is uh, a famous uh, decomposition that is called JSJ decomposition or also toral decomposition, which describe how you can um, cut your uh, tree manifold along um, tories, tori that are in your um, uh, manifold. So you are cutting along tori instead of cutting along um, spheres. And if you think about fundamental groups in that case, then the fundamental group of a toy is uh, 
an abelian group, um, a free abelian group. And so if you consider here n equal to three, then you will discover that this statement uh, has the flavor of a JSJ decomposition because we are uh, cutting uh, PV3 that we groups along uh, uh, maximum uh, three abelian groups. And um, um, yes, so this is, uh, and actually, PD3 uh, for P groups, they arise as um, a completion of fundamental group of um, three manifolds. Um, and I think that, sorry, oh, yes. And also this one in the discrete case, you, uh, you can find it in the church here is, uh, was a theorem by Popola from the 1990. And uh, with this, I finished the, the talk. Thank you so much. And Thank you, Daria. Are there any questions, comments? Well, uh, I have actually a question comment, but I don't want to address it to the speaker because I know that speaker went to Bielefeld to do something else, not for the groups. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, well, uh, the point is that after uh, we know that uh, proper version of um, Seller theorem is true, it is natural to ask uh, the profinite version of this. And uh, the answer is that we don't know even for k equals zero. All right. Why? Because first of all, uh, when a group acts uh, on uh, a profinite trivial, trivial edge stabilizers, it doesn't imply that it is a free profinite product. And so you cannot apply uh, Grushko theorem. And uh, in fact, uh, in profinite uh, group theory, Grushko theorem doesn't hold uh, as uh, uh, Andrea Lucchini proved. So we have two obstacles to prove it, and therefore uh, it is open. All right, any more comments or questions? I see no question, uh, no virtual question. So let's thank you, Larry, again for this nice talk. Thank you so much.